Thank you for all of that lovely music, Bonnie, to help us settle our hearts and minds in for a time of spiritual reflection together. Welcome everyone online, for we just have the filming team here. That's what we call ourselves now, maybe. So we are glad that you are joining us online. It was thought uh, when we went to the Modified Red, the uh, Joint Elders met, and it was thought since the cases were in pretty close proximity to us that it would be uh, just extra cautious for us to go to online only for the next uh, two weeks. And then coming up on the uh, 21st, we have something special happening here that uh, will bring the choir together here for that joint service. And so we won't have any reservations for that week either because the choir will need all our space to be properly spaced out for protocol reasons. And But we're looking forward to hearing the choir and to see how that's all going to work. So come for that uh, bit of an experimental service, I guess, on the 21st. We're here in the third Sunday of Lent. Unfortunately, we missed the second Sunday of Lent. It was a bit of weather and a bit of COVID, I think, that uh, caused the elders in Princetown to decide it might be safer to be at home that day. And we weren't prepared for online that day, so um, here we are now back again. So I'm glad you're with us. So. In the season of Lent, we still celebrate, and we have birthdays to celebrate, so Bev is back with us for that. We do have some birthdays. Um, I noticed one from last week, since we weren't together last week, I'll announce. Lydia Pickering had a birthday. Um, also, Jerry Mawinney had a birthday yesterday. Doris Powell turns 90 tomorrow. Bob Doddart has a birthday on Tuesday. Heather Arsnow is celebrating on Thursday. And Nicole Boucher is having a birthday on Friday. So happy birthday to everybody. Happy birthday to you, to Jesus be true. May God's richest blessings abide on to you. Now, I just know if these were in more usual days, and uh, Doris was sitting up here in the choir, and it was just announced that she's turning 90 tomorrow, this group of people would have said, yo, congratulations and happy birthday to Doris. So hopefully we'll get to see Doris sometime sooner rather than later, so we can express birthday greetings. As we come together on this day, we light our candle again with the presence of the world symbolized in our globe, with our Lenten journey symbolized in our ashes, and may the light that shone in the life of Jesus shine also in you. And also in you. Thank you. We're going to sing the words to call us to this time. Through this Lenten season, we're trying to ponder and think about what it is we can bring to Lent, what it is that Lent brings to us in our practices and our focus. And so we sing together, What Can I Do? What can I say? What can I sing? I'll sing with joy. I'll say a prayer. I'll bring my love. I'll do my share. What can I do? What can I bring? What can I say? What can I sing? I'll sing with joy. I'll say a prayer. I'll bring my love, I'll do my share. All of those things that we ponder through this, oh, I just turned my mic off. Sorry, there we go. All these things that we ponder, what we can bring, say, do, 
and then the ways that we can respond to this Lenten time. So we like to remind ourselves and reaffirm for ourselves our faith at this time. And we're going to say the words of the new creed and they're printed in the bulletin that you have, that was posted for you. And let's say these words together. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us sing this morning an old hymn of the church that reminds us of that faithful journeying of those who have come before us, faith of our fathers and mothers. Good to recognize those parts of the faith-filled living that don't change over time because we know that our understanding and our expression of faith has changed over the years but in that hymn holy faith daring faith love revealed making love known and living faith these are parts of the faith journey that do not change over the centuries or over the years and we each find our way on those paths. So I looked at the lectionary scriptures for last week and for this week and have combined them a little bit so that we could, uh, so we wouldn't miss out on something. And so a passage from Genesis 17 about covenants that were made. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. 
At this, Abram fell face down on the ground and then heard God say, This is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I am changing your name. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham, for you will be the father of many nations. I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. Then God said to Abraham, regarding Sarai, your wife, her name will no longer be Sarai. From now on, she will be Sarah, and I will bless her and give you a son from her. Yes, I will bless her richly, and she will become the mother of many nations. And then from the Christian scriptures, the Gospel of John, the second chapter. We're picking up parts of now the story that we are living into over these East, uh, Lenten days toward Easter. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. In the temple area, he saw merchants selling cattle, sheep, and doves for sacrifice. He also saw dealers at tables exchanging foreign money. Jesus made a whip from some ropes and chased them all out of the temple. He drove out the sheep and the cattle, scattered the money changers, coins all over the floor, and turned over their tables. Then, going over to the people who sold doves, he said to them, Get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. May there be words for us from the Spirit this morning. Interesting that we have for our lectionary this morning this passage about Abraham, as some of you may have seen on the news yesterday or the day before. Uh, the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church visiting what is believed to be the birthplace, the house, the, what is left of the structure where Abraham was born. He's there trying to bring some words of reconciliation and coming together of the three world religions that really get our beginnings from this person, Abraham's call. So for Jews, we read from the scripture in Genesis, for Christians, because of course our uh, tradition is based on and come, grows out of the uh, Jewish tradition, and Muslims all recognize the patriarchal leadership of Abraham. And so interesting that that's in our scriptures this morning, even as that's happening, uh, being highlighted in the world. Well, on the first Sunday of Lent, which was two weeks ago now, we went with Jesus into the desert. We pondered his temptations, and we pondered our own temptations, particularly the temptation to power in our particular society. Something that may help us keep our temptations, and the, particularly the one to power, in check, I think, is to ponder covenants and this covenant we have with God. We read the story about Abraham, the name changed from Abram to Abraham, and think that's a story for Abraham. But really, it's a story for all of us, because that pattern, that notion of a covenant with the divine was passed on from uh, Abram's children, grandchildren, generation to generation, to many of our families who passed it on to us. This idea that we have a living relationship with the divine. We have talked about our many different images of God, and this covenant story gives us this image of a God of connection and community. Covenant is a pretty common biblical word, especially through these uh, Old Testament scriptures. But covenant is not really a word that we use a lot. Um, I think it came into more use when we were... Um, before it was legalized that uh, two men or two women could marry, and we talked about them joining in a covenant because we wanted it to make it sound a more significant union, I think. 
So covenant and contract are not quite the same. It is something between two or two groups, but as I was thinking about it, a contract, you know, it comes with many pages of legal document, you check off all the legalities, you sign your names on the bottom, and then you have to live by that. Covenant, yes, we sign uh, documents when people uh, have weddings and make that official covenant with each other. We sign documents when congregations covenant with uh, clergy people to lead in spiritual ways in their congregations. But it's not so much about the signatures on those pages as it is about the living covenant that we try to share together that moves and changes with our needs and our necessities and deepens over our time together. So our first passage was about the covenant between El Shaddai. And some of you who are very uh, constant folks with us online here who have been in church for many weeks, remember we were talking about the Jewish practice of using different names for God depending on what they were trying to lift up in that communication with God. So we see it translated as God Almighty in our English translations. Our passage, though, is really about that connection between El Shaddai and Abram and Sarai. We get to know Abraham and Sarah through many stories, and we hear and read about their deepening connection with their God and how they pass that tradition on. Now the second scripture takes us to Jesus' life. He's trying to live out his covenant with his Abba Father God. We have that reference in the Christian scriptures. We've heard the stories over these recent Sundays about Jesus' baptism, his great mountaintop experience with the uh, experience with the past prophets, his desert time of pondering and challenge, and today we see his passion coming out, his passion to follow what he believes is his call. And of course, an action that would be, well, it would be considered quite countercultural in his time and heretical by many people in his time. All of the biblical covenants sort of make a pattern for us that we can be in a, in a covenant as well. For our covenant is about so much more than just knowing the stories of God or Jesus or the prophets. It's about so much more than knowing this Bible verse and that Bible verse. It's about this living presence that we commune with and grow with. So how do you experience this covenant with God. Some people, and I guess over the years, it seemed to be almost the only way to live out your covenant was to join a community of faith because communities of faith try to live out that covenant. We have rituals, we have membership declarations, affirmations of faith like the one we've already spoken this morning. And all of these things can help strengthen our continued connection with the divine. But what else can help us know God with us throughout our days? In the anxieties of the unknown, in the times of physical or mental illness, in the times when the past seems just, whew, can I take one more step, or even if you can't see the path at all. One of uh, my Facebook friends this week posted something that seemed to link with the ponderings I was having about how do we live out this covenant and connection. It speaks of the people we share our lives with, finding people who can, we can surround ourselves with. And so I'm just going to read a small portion of this. It says, and I'm quoting now, find people who help you feel more at home in your heart, mind, and body and who take joy in your joy. Find people who love you for real and who accept you for real, just as you are. They're out there, these people. Your tribe is waiting for you. That's a quote from Scott 
Stabil, I'm going to say his name. I've never heard it spoken. But it speaks of the people that we share our lives with. And our tribe is made up of people who are living in covenant with God in the many images that God is for all the rest of us. We need that community around us. So I was curious about this man, Scott Stabile. So I looked him up, of course, as we all do now, on the Google. And his recent book is called Big Love, which sounds kind of interesting. And a reviewer said this about him. And again, I quote, Scott is a force for love in a time when we are all desperate for healing. Who does that sound like to you? As we sit here on a Sunday morning, reading stories about a man named Jesus from long ago. Jesus certainly was a force for love in a time when people were desperate for healing. And we are called to follow his way. Love, of course, is just another way to talk about a greater depth of understanding between people, how we engage with one another, the people that we know so well and the people that we don't know at all, the people who do things just like we do, and the people who seem to do everything in a different way. The covenant of love is passed down in many different ways and many different places. And those of us who name ourselves as church people have to remind ourselves that the covenant of love is not just passed down by churches. As a matter of fact, we have some folks in churches that aren't passing on the covenant of love in the way that Jesus did. As communities of faith, we need to remind ourselves of this covenant love. It's a divine love energy in the world. And it's for everyone. It's for everyone always present within us and around us in the most difficult of our days and in the most joyous of our days. And then, of course, after our feeling of, oh, that is a fabulous gift. Thanks be to God for this wonderful gift. Then we have to remember and remind ourselves that in that covenant, there's a give and there's a receive. And so we can think about the people who need this gift of acceptance and love and care and that they might know the gift is from God. Even when we know many different shapes, many different shapes and looks and styles of people, but yet God's love is all encompassing. We are in a season in the church when we take time to remind ourselves of such things as this, of the love that we have within and of those who need it. So how will we receive this love this week? Because we all need to receive it. And then how will we share that love this week? Jesus was one who was inspired and challenged, stirred and led by that inner spirit and by friends who encouraged and joined him in his own sense of calling. May we each develop that kind of circle around us. May we each be part of that kind of circle for others. I mentioned before that through this Lenten time, I'm reading a collection of essays from the Iona community. And I want to share an affirmation of faith that I found written there written by members of the Iona community. We believe that God is present in the darkness before the dawn, in the waiting and uncertainty where fear and courage join hands, conflict and caring link arms. We believe in a with us God who sits down in our midst to share our humanity. We affirm a faith that takes us beyond the safe place into action, into vulnerability, and into the streets. That's the end of the quote. May we be such people 
this Lenten journey, as we again recognize the covenant that we share, the depth of that covenant, and the one who is ever present with us. We're going to sing a response to those words as we sing, Walk With Me, printed in your bulletin, and many of you will know the refrain, even if you don't have the verse printed out. This could be a lovely slogan for our congregations, walking together, building the land where love shines through. Part of the way that we share our love for one another is praying for one another. And I know that you do this every day. Some of you have someone deep in your heart that you're trying to help with your prayerful love energy sent to them through your words. And so we want to continue to pray for those from our congregations and those that, those that we know. I'm so happy to report that both Betty and Robert are home from hospital and uh, making their way in the transitions that uh, come with illness. We continue to pray for Clifford. I'm thinking these days, too, of the people that, you know, it's been... We just about mark the one-year anniversary now. Some people have marked it, those who felt the effects of COVID in February. I remember that it was March 15th. That was our last Sunday before our churches were shut down. And there's been many people through this year that have lost loved ones and have had to go through this always difficult first year uh, without someone have to go through their grief in such different ways. And so let's continue to pray for those folks that we know who have lost someone. They had to have tiny funerals or they had to wait for months before they could get the people together they wanted to be together or just couldn't have the people popping in, dropping by with the gifts and things for them. And so let's keep them in our thoughts because uh, most of us have lived through days of grief and we know this first year is a difficult transition time. I think for those this year, it probably has been much more. So let's take some moments to pray for and hold the people in our hearts that you know that uh, you have been praying for. Let's do that silently together.
Holy One, we do give thanks for this deep and strong and much felt covenant that we have with you. We pray that that spirit of presence and comfort might be with all of those who we have just held in our hearts. For those in recuperation, for those going through treatments for illnesses, for those doctoring, trying to find the issue, and for those in grief. May they all feel held in that presence of holiness, in that presence of strengthening and comfort. And may we be carriers of those gifts to them. We pray for peoples around the world who are still being ravaged by the grief COVID has brought to so many millions. Those who have other issues in their lives of homelessness, lack of food or work, domination from governments, from people. We pray for all of them and pray that we might live our lives in gratitude, yes, but also in awareness of the situations of others. We give thanks this day for celebrations and anniversaries and birthdays, and especially pray birthday blessing on Doris this day for a milestone birthday coming up. And we give thanks this day as communities of faith for all who have supported and continue to support our ministries here. We pray our prayers every day because we lean into your spirit, that spirit that was at the core of Jesus' life, at the core of Abraham's life, and the prophets and wise sages from his time to our day. We give thanks for them all. Amen. We have a few announcements to bring to your attention. I mentioned at the beginning, but just to reiterate, uh, next Sunday and the next, the 21st, no in-person worship. On the 21st, it's going to be a a wonderful uh, celebration, I think, for the choir, for the choir to come together with Bonnie, and uh, they will be spread out through this sanctuary in safe distances, and we will get to see them online. I will be away, as you'll note there, from March 15th to the 22nd, as we have moved to three-quarter time. And when I come back, then on the 28th, can you believe it, it will be Palm Sunday. So we will celebrate together. And my great hope is that we will be on a wharf somewhere Christmas Day and watch the sun rising. (laughs) Christmas Day. Thank you. (laughs) Wow, I just did a swoop back in time. I had deep hopes for Christmas too, so I'm hoping Easter Day. Thank you very much. Sometimes I wonder if if, uh, Adam is with me, you know, because he's so busy there. and He quickly jumped out to remind me what season we're in. So Easter morning, I'm hoping we'll be on the Malpec Wharf, and so we will give you information about that. Reminder that next Sunday the clocks change, so we spring ahead, so don't forget that on Saturday evening. A note about the food bank, I know you take note of that. And the series of uh, educational events that's being offered by the Affirm Committee of our region. The next one coming up is this week, March the 10th, on becoming an anti-racist church. And we have uh, some sharing from people in our region, and there'll be some time for Uh, conversation together but you you do need the link for that so please just be in touch with me at the office to get that link Uh, we couldn't seem to bring up the link in order to print you have to do that uh, from your computer I think that's all we have for announcements Uh, it was great to hear that our United Church women's group got together uh, last week the week before, last, yeah, 
and uh, had a, a wonderful distanced time here. And so they're go hoping that they will continue on monthly now as they did before. So if you want to be on that list of information, Bonnie would be the one to be in touch with. Well, let us go to our, clo our closing hymn is When Long Before Time. And Bonnie sang a couple of verses of this for us a couple of weeks ago to remind us of the tune uh, because it's not one we've sung often. So it's number 248 if you have uh, the Voices United hymn book at home. And we're singing verses 4, 5, and 6. <laughs> Its harmonies broken and almost unheard. The singer goes to us to sing it again. Our God is with us in the world now as then. The light has returned as it came once before. The song of the Lord is our own song once more. So let us all sing with one heart and one voice the song of the singer in whom we rejoice. To you, God the singer, our voices we raise. To you, song incarnate, we give all our praise. To you, Holy Spirit, our life and our breath. Be glory forever through life and through death. And we have words to share with one another, a blessing as we go. And if you are at home... Uh, sitting by yourself with your phone or computer. I hope you'll say these out loud to yourself as we are saying them to one another here or with whoever is in your home. We say these words together. In our Lenten traveling, may we know the presence of the one walking with us. May we know again the birthing of spirit life within. May we know of sharing life's blessings with one another. We go out singing, I have called you by your name. I have called you by your name, you are mine. I have you and ask you now to shine. I will not abandon you. All my promises are true. You are gifted, called, and chosen. You are mine. I have given you a name. It is mine. I Spirit as a sign with my wonder in your soul, make my wounded children whole. Go and tell my precious people they are mine. As we've had this time together, a few of us here many of you there maybe Sunday morning or sometime through the week but may we be stirred to know our own precious relationship with the divine and may we go to tell all of their precious relationship with God let's go in that spirit of loving care